Okay, good. So, yeah, so we're getting towards the end of the course. So we have two weeks basically in a block, and then the last week will be final project. So, so we are still talking about the identification problem for the Watson boundary, and then the, the final goal would be to to, to give complete proof of identification of the quantum boundary for groups acting on hyperbolic spaces, like mapping class groups or hyperbolic groups or relatively hyperbolic groups. So, so what we um, need now is criteria to do that. And we already mentioned last time the issue of sublinear tracking. So today we're gonna prove this, this criteria. So, so first of all, we need we need some good properties on the action. So, okay, we, again, we we have a, a usual convergent group. And this group acts, yeah, this group acts by isometries on a space, a metric space, the same geodesic metric space. And we take O a base point. And first of all, okay, first of all, we want that this action is not too bad. So we say that the action, the action on top G on X has exponentially bounded growth. Well, if the number of elements in a metric ball grows of course exponential with the exponentially with the radius. So is this some C? Well, it could be bigger than one, it matter. Is that the number of G in G that have distance at most R from the base point? grows exponentially at most exponentially. So for instance, C to the E to the C R to everything R. That's, that's a classical condition. Of course, in most geometric situations, you will definitely have this. For instance, if you have a finally generated group acting on a scalar graph, this is definitely a case. But also if you have other groups acting on, on other manifolds, most of the time you, you, you would have this, yes? Yeah, um, but last time we proved the rate criterion, right? So, the what? The rate criterion. Well, we haven't quite proved, proved it. I mean, we, yeah, at least, yeah, we, we've given that idea. Yeah, so I want to get, go a little deeper into to, to that proof. Okay, yeah. So, so, okay, so, so that's, that's, that's one thing. And, so yeah, so that that then we, we we need. So also re recall the following. So recall that the, the a measure a measure mu has finite first moment. Mu on G has finite first moment. If well the integral of the distances. So we take. One step of the random walk, you, you measure the distance, and you're taking the average with respect to the measure mu. You can write it as an integral, you just a sum, it's fine. Okay. By the way, so here is the first exercise that do is that if the action in G at Exponentially bounded flow. And mu has finite first moment. Then the entropy of mu is finite. So in fact, so so finite entropy is, is is very important. But for instance, in this equation, it's kind of implied by this. The trick here is to sum over. So let me give you a hint. The hint here is to sum over annuli. So 
So you know, we take G such that the distance between L and GL is between R times K and R times K plus one for certain. And so using the, the, the final code moment and the exponential ground flow, when you do the summation, the entropy computation, then you can get you can get the final. Okay, so that's a that's a, a nice nice end of it. So and again, so what so then so in general, again we, we are in this geometric situation, maybe the definition we say that. Right, last time, because from now on, we really want to uh, prove everything in this setting. We say that X has a modification. X bar is X is the union of X at some other space. If the action G, yeah, G X by homeomorphisms. On X bar and yeah, and X inside X bar is that. So we take we find another bigger space in which X injects, and yeah, so there's an injective map of that image, and the group acts by homeomorphism on the whole space. And again, why I call it modification is because it's not always compact and it's it's fine most of the time. So most of the time it would be compact, but even if it's not compact, it's fine. Okay. And okay, and so 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 the setting again, if if we know that for almost every sample cap in omega. The limit exists, exists in the boundary, then we already know that the boundary of X with this mu is a mu boundary. And we have the so-called boundary map, which we can call it different ways, maybe B and D is a traditional way. We call it from the space of infinite sample cast to, to the boundary of X, which is just the, the limit. Boundary of omega is the limit of this sample cast. And yeah, so remember that what is a view boundary? View boundary is a space uh, on which G acts, it has a stationary measure, mu, which in this case is the hidden measure. And there is a projection map from the space of infinite sample paths to the boundary. And this projection map is shifted there. So it's tied in there. And the reason is because we're taking the limit. So the tied in there is baked into the limit definition, if we know that the limit is. Okay? The questions? Yeah. Yes, for the modification part. So the redistributive action on the axis itself is still the isometric. That's right. That's right. That's right. So yeah. So G, yeah, extending. Yeah, exactly. So the as by yeah, that's right. So then the action extends. It, yeah, it if um if 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 in the if X heat is a like is a, like action of yeah, yeah. of G on X. And sense to action by all the words. Yeah. But the last three lines, if we know that X here is a chromo hyperbolic group, yeah. is this map finite one from the sample paths to. No. There are a lot of sample paths, which so I should say no. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. Basically, I don't know any interesting geometric situation. Point one, because in the 1950s, 
There are at least infinitely many sample paths that converge to the bottom. Even even in the semi group case, hmm. even if you can only you know you can only vector, you can reach the same boundary point at different speeds along the GLS. So all this would consider, be considered different. Paths. So yeah, this is usually that. But of course, the fact that this is a plasma bundle, if you want to assume or prove it eventually, means that this quotient is not too bad. I mean, once you once you quotient it out by starting areas, which you have to, basically, basically, you this is the next best thing. Okay, so so in abstract, now we can define the rank criterion and then. Yeah, we saw last time how to apply it in a when you have this linear tracking property. So basically, so the, the, the theorem, the rank criterion in a sort of abstract way. Again, this is definitely due to time knowledge. Is the following. So suppose that we are in this situation, so suppose. There, uh, there exists. There are a sequence of maps, sequence of measurable maps So phi n. So for each n, there is a map, and these maps are again from the now from the boundary back to the group. And so for each end, you, you want to project back from the boundary back to the group. And, and the following, we want to say that if you look at the distance between the end step of the walk, right to the base point, for instance, and this map, so we take this map. Now you see, we, 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 we have a sample path. We, we take the boundary point of the sample path. So this is the limit point. And you project it back to the group. And so this is another element of the group coordinate. So divided by that, suppose that this goes to zero for almost every omega in omega. Okay. So then, Indeed, this the geometric boundary is a model. So this is a bit more abstract. So in principle, these maps need not to, need not come from from geodesics. That is, however, the most common application. That's why this is good. Ray criteria because you take point, you see that the path converges to your boundary point side, the boundary, and for each n, you want to pick a point in the group that is close to the path. Right? And so the easiest, the most common way to do this is to draw geodesic ray here. For instance, if the boundary is some sort of visual boundary, then you can do this. Of course, it depends a little bit on the actual boundary that you have. But, and right, so so here you would have pi n of psi is some points that, for instance, you could be on the geodesic. And yeah, if this map is not on the group, but from some space, so you have to approximate the, the path on the geodesic with some group or the L. Usually you can do this, and then yeah, then WN is somewhere. WN O is from point there. And so again, you want to make sure that this is something that is small O of N, and that would be that would be enough. Okay. So okay, so let's see. How to how to formally prove this? 
I, I, I've given a very intuition last time, so it makes sense. But I want to also make you use the theory of partitions that we discussed. So, because since we already have all the technical backgrounds on these partitions, I think it's kind of nice that we can more or less do precise proof. So, so, okay, so, so we call that following. So, so, So there are two partitions that are associated to this situation. So one is the first Poisson partition. So let eta be the Poisson partition. And E, what is the partition such that if you take your sample pass and you approach it, yeah, and this double quotient, uh, like the tricky quotient by omega uh, eta, this is the Poisson boundary, so BPF, Poisson consumer. So this one exists because my upside nonsense. And on the other hand, we have the geometric partition. So that's eta prime being the geometric partition. Meaning what? Meaning that two paths WN is equivalent to A in eta prime to WX prime if the limits are the same. So this is another way of separate points. And what we know is that since this is the Poisson, a, a, a new boundary, right? Since boundary of X is a new boundary, well, we know which which one is finite. So, so eta prime cannot be finer than the Poisson boundary partition because, by definition, the Poisson boundary partition is the finest one. That's respect on this world. Otherwise, said is that the quotient is the maximum one, is the one with the most points. So this one that we have for free just from the fact that this is a new one. Of course, we, we want to show in fact, of course, that eta prime equals eta up to measure zero sets. And yeah, yeah, that's exactly the the, the point. And the, of course, the way we do this is by entropy computation, because that's sort of so. By the way, in terms of entropy, oh, but also we have the recall the head partition. Recall we have alpha, which is what we call the alpha one before the head partition. Which is we identify points, we identify paths if they're the same at step one. So if W1 equals W1 prime. Okay, so this is the head partition. So uh, in general, because of this, we have. That if you have the entropy of alpha condition and eta, and the entropy on alpha condition and eta prime, which one is bigger? So you're seeing like this? Yeah, why is that? Yeah, that's right. So we, we one is it's not to uh, get confused, right? <laughs> So yeah, so eta prime is the course of partition of the right? So so if you know only less information and you condition on it, then you you get more entry. Yeah, so that's the correct the correct way. Okay, so again we know that and again we, we kind of want to say that this is equal to each other. If this is equal, not for just for alpha one, but for every alpha k. 
then this has to be equal for the all table algebra. And so then the two conditions are the same. Let's have it there. Okay. And also we have a conditional, conditional random walk. It is called, even though it's not a random walk. <laughs> Warning. <laughs> so, so remember, we pick a point psi in the boundary. And well, first of all, we can we can take p and disintegrate. So we take the space of sample paths that converge to psi, and we can so so we can disintegrate the measure p, which is on the whole path space with respect to this partition. And so each fiber is the space of path that converge to given psi. And so if you take the average of this, by definition of the, you know, this integration theorem, you see that the, the, you know, the integral of each side is, is P. What else is P psi? So P psi again is the condition of measure on the space of paths that converge to psi. But fortunately, there is a formula for that conditional process because otherwise we, we wouldn't be able to actually too much. <laughs> so, so here's a path that you can convince yourself of is the, this that you see. So, each side is is the measure. On space of sample paths, um, yeah, can you by the following process? Mark a process, but it's not a random walk. And it's like that. So the probability of going from X to Y, well, if, if you don't condition, the usual probability is mu of x n plus y. So for, for x and y in g, so this would be the usual random walk. The probability of going from x to y is mu of x n plus y. But we add another term, which depends on this boundary. And in fact, it's like this. It's d y mu, y star mu, divided by d s star mu of sorry. So what does it mean? It means that you, you can start with the paths, straight of sample paths, and at, you know, and at each step uh, on the group, you, you define a process on the group using this group, each step. So you take in the, the, the usual transition probability, and then you you modify it by 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 using this periodic derivative at the boundary point. So, so the idea is your condition this walk. You that is your you want to end inside. <laughs> you you really want to end inside. And so the way you do it is okay. You you do the usual walk, but you're also taking this radonic derivative to force your, your walk to, to be attracted to what side. So, so there is a computation to be made that, that the, the process induced by this on the space of the infinite paths is equal to the disintegration of P with respect to respect. So this is from the point of view of infinite paths. We just take the original process and we disintegrate with respect to the boundary point. And this is just, you know, the recipe step by step, but at infinity, it produces the same measure. And so this is, this is called the conditional random walk. It's not, again, it's not a random walk. So that's a little bit of a thing to, to take care of. Okay. So, so once you have given this, so recall that the goal 
is to show that the entropy of this induced this condition of random walk is zero for new almost every side. Because we saw that this is the relative version of the entropy criterion. If this, in order to tell that this geometric boundary really is the boundary, we just to speak have to check that for every boundary point, if you're conditioning the walk to hit side, well, this induced process has zero entropy. This tells you that there is no more entropy once you once you're conditioned by hit side. Yes. Uh, this this problem of this uh P have a like interpretation has completely two range. Sorry, this problem of the interpretation has like the interpretation on uh two gauge transform for uh which transform? It's like like, like is it is like a two gauge transform this uh, probably yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah yeah so the dupe term yeah 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 so Okay, so so yeah, so now we, we, we want to get this. And so so now the issue, the, the basic point is that we use this recipe to compute the entropy of this induced walk. Okay. So so how do we how do we do this? Well, we take basically, yeah, basically we're 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 taking the law like this, right? So so big side. Right. In general, from this, we can get the P psi of what? Of, of the seven of the, yeah. Yeah, of the cylinder of that N containing WN. Right, so, so what we see N, right? So C and D is the space of omega such that now we end of G. Okay. So we want to ask what is the probability that the n step equals WF in this induced path? And we can compute it by, by doing this. And so we, we have, yeah, we, we, we have really this guy, which is Mu n is our n w n. This is the probability for the classical wall. And then it has to be corrected by this. And this would be like w d w n new middle as somewhere in the star size. Right. So we we it's like we, we apply this at you know at times and then yeah, we start from the origin and we go to WN. So the probability of going to WN at the end starts is the usual one corrected by this. It's not so strange. And now we want to take the log in one over N log of that. That's, that's the point, right? So we want to do one over N log of this thing. And so this is the usual entropy, basically. Plus this other term. Okay. And so, so we get a and to figure out when it's delivered. Right? Okay, so so first of all, then this is what one term. Okay, maybe we take the negative because we get negative at every step, you know. Uh, you know, all these quantities are smaller than one. So okay, so so this term here cannot be surprising that this converges to the asymptotic tension because well, this is basically the Kevin Bryan and McMillan theorem. And if you take the entropy, if you take the uh, you take the integral of this, this is literally the 
the entropy, right? And then, well, actually, almost surely you, you know, have this convergence. This, right? So, in fact, okay, the way to think about it, you can say, you, you can not be precise, you can say that a n omega has minus log w n w n like this is a subordinate equal cycle. Right, because because right because a a n right so yeah we want that new star n plus m of w n plus m bigger than mu n mu star n w m times mu star m of the rest of the pair the n plus one. I love that this is what you already saw. <laughs> and so, and, and so if you take log and, 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 and that, you get that this is a surviving co cycle. With respect to, and, and actually, what is the dynamics here is the shift in the space of increments. So that sigma from omega to omega, that shift. In the space of increments, not not t, what we said before, <laughs> because t is not measurable time in this And we know that a n plus n of omega is less or equal than a n of omega plus a n sigma n of omega. And so by king one zero, there is a limit. So by king one, a limit of m goes to infinity of minus one over m log u star and mu now u n exists because it's finite entropy, so that's the integrability condition and yeah, this sort of converges, it has to convert to the integral of it, which by definition is a true. And by the way, this property in general is called the Shannon McMillan Bryan theorem for dynamical systems because it says, right. It says that the measure of a cylinder set of, 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 of that n grows the case exponentially fast, almost surely, and with a rate which is the n. And in fact, this is for discrete groups. You have this, this inequality, so that's kind of trivial. For locally compact groups, this problem was open for many years. We, we proved it a couple of years ago that you can actually do something like this for local compact groups. But, because this this inequality is no longer true for for uh, discrete groups because everything has measure zero. Let me have to say something like the probability of a neighborhood is sub 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 additive something like this, but it's not clear how to do it that way. Actually. So anyway, so so this one is in the countable case is somewhat somewhat simple, but it is a very important ingredient. It is very particular. And now, and now what? And, and now the, the other the other term here. So the other term. What is the other term? So. Yeah, so 
This is somewhat related to the first event, actually. Right? Because you see, so 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 recall the recall that the first event entropy is basically a new of boundary is basically the integral of minus log e g nu d nu psi. D nu g d nu psi. So there is a there is an inverse. It's a question of technical reason. So it this is not exactly exactly the same. But so that's basically that's basically what you you take as a random integer derivative. Take the log and you integrate, and that's more or less what you're doing here. Because here. The distribute, so you're looking, so you're taking the law of, of the redon naked in derivative and your average, right? So, in fact, this is just a yes, but it's basically a bit of sum. So, I think. What you do is you take, yeah, you take the, uh, the function f of omega which is minus log e g1 nu d nu in psi this is a function from omega to omega, I'm sorry, to omega to r. And, and, and this guy here is that is the vehicle sum of this observable with respect to the shape. So we, if we do that, the vehicle sum, so we call S and F of omega, which is the sum, of f composed to sig from k, k from zero to n minus one, this. Well, this one, yeah, if you, you see, you multiply this because it's like that, then you, you should get minus one over n log dwn nu. So this is the Radon, uh, yeah, this is the uh, whatever. So this is the you know big of sum of curtain observable. And so from there we can get what is and, and this, yeah, the sigma is, is ergodic, right? So there is the sigma map here, which is ergodic. And so here we, we get a um, yeah we, we get that this converges to to uh, to to the space average. And so if you do a computation, what is the space average? So it turns out that this this term at minus one over n log e w n u the new of sign this converges to to the following to h H of alpha given 
theta prime minus h of alpha h. Yes, I think this is basically, yeah, this is basically the first number entropy of this of this bubble. So yeah, so this is by yeah, this is just my my this is just my own not my own not. So yeah, so now we can we can put together the, the various so you see this had to do with the action on, on this boundary specific boundary because psi is a point of this specific geometric boundary. So in the end, if you take the limit here, you get the following. You get that H of P psi, so this relative entropy is like this, is equal to H infinity. So this is the first term. This is the aspect entropy, and then plus plus this. So minus h of alpha, which is the same as h of mu, plus h of alpha given. And we we have to call. You know, we have to um, compare this. So the question is, we want this to be zero. And well, we already know what happens for the Poisson partition because this we already computed before. So for the Poisson partition, for on partition eta. Well, this one we already computed before. We know that H of alpha given the Poisson partition is the same as H of mu. So again, it's like H of alpha, H of mu, alpha minus the asymptotic energy. So this one we, we did the computation when we when we um when we proved that the classical entropy criterion for just the triviality because we said that you see that the entropy of alpha condition of eta equal the entropy of alpha if and only if this term disappears. So this one we proved proved uh with proof of the sort of absolute entropy criteria. So, 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 okay, so this is what it was on partition, and then we have this other partition. And of course, we want to say that the two entropies are the same if and only if this, this condition of entropy is zero. So okay, that's that's <laughs> that's pretty clear <laughs> once you once you just compare the two things, right? <laughs> because of course H H of alpha given eta prime is what? Well, is H alpha minus H and H mu minus H of each side. So clearly, so H alpha given eta equals H alpha given eta prime. Well, this is equivalent. Say that H of each side is zero. Or, and, and this doesn't matter if basically everything is ergodic. So for almost for new 
almost every side. So it's it's the same. Since everything is regarded here, the limit for almost every point is already complete. Yeah, forgive me if I'm not brave enough to write down the details of this step, but this verification. <laughs> I think the ergodic pair tells you that that converges to the expectation of that, right? Yeah. Right. So then how do you use well, basically the expectation of F is the the first divergent. Yeah. Yeah. And then the first divergent entropy is I mean, the difference of this one. Okay. Yeah, I think that's yeah. that's exactly what they tell us. Okay, are there other questions? Okay, so so far, so basically, we feel finally this relative entropy criterion that once you have a geometric boundary, this is the quantum boundary, if and only if the conditional entropy for almost every boundary point is zero. That's 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 the goal of this. And again, in order to do that, we had to we had to look at the Shannon Ryman McMillan theorem to, to say that to, to get this term and then the entropy entropy gives you the second. Okay, so now once you once you have this, we we can give the proof of the ray approximation because well we kind of did already well go through that idea last time, so maybe it's good time, but it's good. Way to finish to see what the proof now the proof of ray criterion again there is a map by n from the boundary to the group for every n and we know that the distance between the nth step of the wall and the projection, this nth projection of the boundary point right this this goes to zero almost sure in fact in probability is enough for so what we're gonna say okay and, and so so the trick is more or less what I already mentioned last time, that to start with psi, we have the point, and we have somehow this guess, this guess is high end of psi, is some point inside the space, and we, we draw a ball of certain radius. For instance, let's draw, draw a ball of radius epsilon m around this. And we know that with very high probability, your your path will be captured by this ball. Okay. So, right. So recall. So what we want? We want that h of t psi is by definition is the limit over n of one over n log the of sorry one over n h of mu n psi. So this is the relative entropy for this process. And so we just do the computation of that relative entropy. And we have two sets, a set of good outcomes, which are where you are inside, a set of bad outcomes where you are not inside. Okay. So we call A n a set of yeah, the set of G such that the distance between um, wait, be, between the end step and between the yeah, GO and the projection. So the idea is its side. Is less than epsilon less n. These are the good outcomes, and that a n complement is, is a bad outcome. And so, 
the, the point again that we we want to make is that the cardinality of a n by the exponential bound growth is less than c e to the epsilon c times n. So in particular, the lim soup or even the limit of one over n log of cardinality of a n, the soup maybe is better equal than epsilon times c. And so now what? Then now we we uh, get to the to the usual computation. So, uh, in fact, uh, for, for simplicity, maybe let let a few let a few that the support view is finite, so that so we can do the usual trick. Otherwise, so let's say in detail again. There is a standard trick using finite first rule, but to, to not go in, into that, we can we can call delta the minimum of the weights of G when when the G is in the support. Okay. And so H of mu and psi is again some minus g is a n mu n psi g log mu n psi g minus a small set And, and here we go again by the by the uh, you know and inequality. So here we can we can divide and, and subtract. Yeah, we can divide by mu n psi of a n, and if you put a minus mu n psi a n here. And so now this is a weighted sum because this this guy, the total sum of those guys is one. So we can do just the inequality. And okay, so mu n is actually less than one. So we don't we don't really care too, too much about this one. So this is well, okay, but we can still write it. So this is log. Of the sum, and here we basically yeah we, we think of this as, as one over mu g. That's yeah, so mu n psi g times mu n psi a n and one over mu n psi of g, and then. Plus this term. So what do we know about this term? Well, we know that mu and psi of g is bigger than factor. Yeah, we 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 okay. We, we have to condition again on psi that is the same. So it's a point support. So we know that this cannot be too small. So this is bigger than delta to the n. And so log. We get log of one over mu n star g is at most well is n log one over the over. Okay, so so this is the usual tail calculation. So we have this one plus plus what well. 
Each term is like that times the sum. So this is like mu and of a n complement times n log one over delta. So to finish, so this one, of course, this, this cancels out. You are left with sum of yeah, yeah. So the sum of how many terms is the, the cardinality of a n. So this is minus mu n psi of a n. This is log. Of the cardinality of a n divided by the measure of a n plus the measure of that, the measure of a n c at n log one over delta s. Okay, and so 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 right. So this is minus log, right? You know, the of a n minus uh, and then there is the usual term here, you know, and uh, you can see there are any miscalculations as well. And so if we divide by n, so h. Mu n star over n. Well, this is one over n log number of a n. This is uniformly bounded, but p over n from here. <laughs> and this is uh, again the Lipsu of mu n a n c times log one over delta. So we could take yeah we could take the lens loop everywhere here. This goes to zero. <clears throat> so this one is so okay. This one we know is less than epsilon than c. This goes to zero, and this okay. This also goes to zero. So that's the classical statement. So in the end, we prove that h of p is to zero. Okay, so that's the end of the computation. So from this, we get that the possible boundary is what we would expect. Any questions? The next week we will see how, how to apply this to group acting on, on hyperbolic spaces. In fact, they are ready to prove that the random walk is converging is non trivial. So we'll be very cool with that. Okay, good.